former U.S. Attorney John Ashcroft on what he makes of the outrage over this. What do you think, uh, John, uh, and, and the fallout from this? Well, first of all, I'm deeply saddened by what's happened at the Justice Department. That begins with the Attorney General of the United States uh, meeting with uh, the spouse of a person that's the subject of a substantial investigation in a private way and then yielding to say that, well, I, I will not exercise my judgment. I'm going to turn this over to the FBI, which is an investigative agency, not a prosecutorial agency. So there's been a pervasive uh, perversion of the Justice Department process over and over again. And, and uh, recent reports like in the Wall Street Journal that suggest that, not only suggest, allege, that uh, the Justice Department has denied investigative tools to be used in investigations related to the Clinton Foundation and, and, and frankly the absence of the use of tools that should have been used in the initial investigation of Hillary Clinton. No uh, grand jury, uh, the uh, uh, idea that there weren't subpoenas, that people were invited to testify, there were substantial grants of immunity. Uh, to individuals, uh, the, these are all highly irregular Well, what things. is irregular then? Help me with the, uh, uh, how unusual it is if you have an FBI director, presumably last week, learning of these other emails that exist through a separate investigation uh, that's going on with Congressman Weiner, former Congressman Weiner. Then these emails come up, and then he goes to the Justice Department, technically his boss is there, to say, in the case of Loretta Lynch, right, I have this stuff, and here's what I want to do and they recommend against it. Um, he goes through anyway. Um, that's unusual in itself, isn't it? Well, I think he is a person who uh, felt it was his duty, especially given the fact that this, was a matter, this is not a matter of just recent days. The investigation into the emails has been a long-standing matter, and material that should have been brought forward as a result of the inquiry earlier was hidden, there, it was stonewalled, uh, they, they didn't bring it forward. Its discovery at this time harkens back to the legislative hearings on this issue where Comey was asked in particular if there were new information that would, would, would become available, would he reopen matters? And the new information did become available and the American people which had been privy to the exculpation of Mrs. Clinton when Comey said that he well, in spite of the fact that there were legal violations, there was a violation of the law, he didn't think they should be prosecutable. I think uh, it was, in, in a sense, he was in a hard place because he, he either had to live with the idea that there was a completed investigation and have the American people believe that against the truth or else no, to no, inform the Congress. No, no, you're quite right. He was in a damned if he did, damned if he didn't position. But I think what the Justice Department was saying, and here you could educate me, sir, uh, it was go ahead and, and pursue this, but um, you shouldn't go public with a letter or something like that because so close to the election, 11 days out, it would be a mistake. I think I got the gist of their, their well, argument here. Well, what do you make of that? Is there precedent or is there an unwritten policy or one that's accepted that you do not meddle in the middle of an election? And is there a time frame to it? Well, those things depend. You know, Senator Stevens was convicted as a result of a prosecution brought in the middle of his Senate campaign, and it wasn't until after his campaign was over he lost the election and had died that the appellate courts reversed the conviction right. based on misconduct by prosecutors. You're talking about Senator so that, Stevens, uh, the late senator of Alaska, but go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so, yes, but this is not an issue. This isn't an October surprise in my judgment. This is the continuity of an issue which had been stonewalled and which, for which information had been requested, which was not fully given. And uh, there was an erroneous uh, uh, statement earlier, much to the acclaim of the people who did the stonewalling, that the investigation was over. And now to say that record needs to be set straight, especially given the assurances that uh, Director Comey had given to the Congress when he said, yes, if there's new information, right. I will have to reopen things, and he sent that letter to the Congress. He did not make the statement to the American people, but obviously the people who had been involved in, in you know, look, the Justice Department sent the FBI in to investigate the Clinton Foundation with its hands tied behind its back. And no subpoenas and uh, other investigative tools which would otherwise be used in an investigation they were told not to use. 
So it's, it's pretty clear to me that there is a significant disappointment in my... This is not the Justice Department that I knew, and which I, be, which I, which I trusted, and which I admired. And well, it's who's a tragedy more at fault, that this... the, the, the Attorney General and her office, extended office, or, 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 or Mr. Comey, and how he handled this? Well, I think there's plenty of fault to go around. Uh, when the uh, Attorney General of the United States abdicated her responsibility and the Justice Department responsibility to make a decision about prosecution, and sought to put that over in the area of the FBI, uh, then that was, I believe, a significant mistake because the FBI is not an agency that is right. subject to congressional oversight the way the Justice Department is. And now we are in, in the continuity of that decision, whether or not he's going to let the American people know the full truth about that investigation or whether they're going to have to live with a, a half-truth, which was based on partial evidence, now that new evidence has been uncovered. And he hasn't really commented on the evidence. He simply said there is additional evidence, and given this additional evidence, he's given notice to the Congressional Committee that he is going to uh, consider the evidence. How long do you think I that takes? It, How long do you think that takes? Because if it's, you know, the traditional argument, if it's not solved before the election, seems unlikely it would be, then this, this well, is I something that is politically damaging to Mrs. Clinton. Well, Mrs. Clinton has had plenty of opportunity to bring this, this information forward. Uh, uh, Huma Abedin and she have uh, exchanged these emails and have been involved in this activity. She, Mrs. Clinton could have settled these issues last year. And now, it may have cost her her primary election in, in, in revealing and having the people understand and know what would be revealed. So it, there, there's a sense in which it's a little disingenuous to be complaining about information coming out late when you are the cause of the information coming out late because of a significant stonewalling effort that's been unfortunately facilitated by the way in which uh, the Attorney General and others have allowed this, camp this uh, particular investigation to be conducted. All right, sir, thank you very, very much for taking the time. And again,